23 measles cases were reported in the U.S. between December of 2023, that's the end of last year, and late January of this year. Most of the cases were among children and teens who had not received the combined measles, mumps, and rubella, or MMR, shots. Our Haley Hernandez is here with more on those numbers. Good morning. Yeah, so last year, 58 cases of the highly infectious disease occurred in 20 states, including here in Texas. And just last month, British health officials urged parents to set up immunization appointments for children missing the combined measles, mumps and rubella or MMR shots. The urgency for the shots in the United Kingdom follows a sharp increase in the measles cases and the lowest vaccination rates in a decade. So joining me right now to remind parents of the importance of immunizing kids is Chief Medical Officer for the City of Houston, Dr. David Purse. Thank you so much for joining me, Dr. Purse. Oh, thanks for having me. So, you know, um, a lot of parents might not even be familiar with what the measles are because there's been such low numbers for so many years now. So can you give us an overview of what parents need to look for when it comes to the measles? I mean, what, what are the symptoms of them? Yeah, and you know, you're exactly right. So here in the United States, we haven't seen measles cases in decades, really. And that's because the vaccine is really, really effective. We can talk about that later. But uh, what we're seeing now in the United States, most cases of measles are what we're calling imported cases. These are folks who went on vacation, whether it be in yeah. Europe or um, uh, the Far East or, or Central America or wherever, uh, they, they bring them back. Now, the symptoms are that you'll get a fever, body aches, it's, it's a lot of runny nose and cough pulmonary, and there's a characteristic rash, tiny little red spots that begin on the head and then sort of spread downward. Mm -hmm. uh, and they, you know, th this is the characteristic rash that you get with measles, but it's generally mostly a, a respiratory illness with uh, coughing and sneezing and runny nose and fever. And as you said, you know, most cases are fine, but some cases can be really very, very serious. So, uh, you know, and you, you were talking about the travel. I mean, we used to just associate this with travel, but now because of low vaccination rates here in the country, I mean, we saw 58 cases last year. Yeah, and that's the, that's the twist. That's what's happened. It used to be for, for decades, we would get just a handful of cases every year. This was somebody who traveled. They caught it while they were on vacation. Very often, people who were, you know, it was the kids who were too young, had not yet been vaccinated, and that's what would bring it back. And it would just, you know, they would take care of that child. That would be the end of it. It wouldn't spread because everybody else is vaccinated. Now we are seeing in the United States cases where people travel generally, and now it's spreading locally. And we haven't seen that in decades. But again, what we're seeing is almost exclusively spreading amongst people who never got vaccinated. And that's not a huge surprise. This is a very infectious um, uh, virus, and the vaccine is highly effective. So the folks who are going to get it are going to be those who are not vaccinated. Yeah, it's somewhere between like 93 and 97 percent effective or something like that. I mean, yeah, basically, you know, the like the thing is that the vaccine is so highly effective. And here's the other thing. It's it's measles, mumps and rubella. So it's actually three vaccines in once. And for the measles and the rubella, if you get vaccinated as a child, you're pretty much good for life. Now, mumps, if there's an outbreak, you may need to get a, another shot as you get older. But with measles, uh, it's, it's not only is it highly effective, but it's one of those ones that protects you basically for the rest of your life. And OK, so me and my family totally fully vaccinated. Are we then at risk of getting it if we come into contact with somebody who has the measles? Well, nothing in medicine is 100 percent, but your chances of, of contracting are extremely low. Um, like I said, it's, it's 97 percent effective. And then even if someone in your family should become infected, if they were vaccinated, they're probably get far less sick than somebody who wasn't vaccinated. And we also need to talk about, you know, how sick you can get, because this can uh, this virus generally infects the, uh, you know, the, the nose, the lungs, but it can also infect the brain and have terrible consequences uh, for a small percentage of people, but it's, it can kill, it does kill. So what do parents need to know if they think that their child has the measles, what should they do? Yeah, this is a really important question. But one of the things about measles <clears throat> is, is how incredibly infectious it is. So the, if one person is infected and they are around other people who are infected, they will likely infect nine to 10 other people who are not infected. Here's the other thing, and this is a really scary thing, is if somebody who's infected with measles is in a room and they are in that room for a couple of minutes and then they leave that room, people entering that room for the next two hours are at risk for contracting it because this virus, it's, it hangs out in the air and it floats around and it remains viable for hours. This is, and then the other thing is that uh, when you're infected with measles, Unfortunately, you start spreading the virus 
for up to four days before you even have any symptoms. So you don't even know that you're infected. So it's not like if you get six day home, you're already four days behind the eight ball with that. So your question is what compares to the number one most important thing to do is to make sure your children are vaccinated. It is extremely effective. You get vaccinated as a young child and you're protected for life. And this, we've had a really successful vaccination campaign here in the United States. And that's why for decades, we almost didn't see any cases at all here. Uh, but that's now changing because people are not getting their, their children vaccinated. So yeah. we're seeing that change. And so well, it's all preventable. Yeah. And a lot of times people will say, oh, you know, you're, you're just trying to scare people. You're trying to create panic. But the thing is, is that this used to terrify people and it's been gone for decades. And now here we are. So the important thing, the message that you're trying to get people to take away with is that this vaccine is very effective. And if somebody is listening and hasn't had the vaccine or maybe doesn't have insurance, where can they go to get one? So, yeah, so there's another point that we need to make is while most people will get well, as much as 25% of the people who become infected with, with measles will require hospitalization, one in four. And then, as you said, about one in a thousand people will die either from the brain swelling or from the pneumonia. Now, if you want to get vaccinated and you don't, um, you're, you're not yet, obviously go through your, your health plan and go through your doctor's office. But if you can't, the Houston Health Department, if you live in the city of Houston and your county health department, if you live outside, uh, get a hold of them. With the city, it's 832-393-4220. And we can get you vaccinated. It's a sliding scale. It's either $5 or $15, depending on where you are and your ability to pay. It's very low cost, extremely effective. It will protect your family. All right, Dr. David Purse, thank you for that valuable information this morning. We appreciate having you on. Yes, thank you.